Ladies and gentlemen, today is February 4th, 2012, and this is the KNKO Show, episode 29. I am your humble host, Ken Lafferty, and today we are going to be doing a special episode on how to get started as a digital painter. We're going to be dealing with tablets, ergonomics, setting up your workspace, and basically how to set up your brushes and pressure sensitivity and all that stuff. But before we get into that, we are going to take a stroll through the lovely Facebook here. A lot of new submissions. Sorry, I have not had a chance to comment on them. Things have been very crazy at work. But I freaking love all of the Art of Revelry submissions. Thank you so much for sending those into the Facebook, as well as your other amazing paintings. So please, continue to do so. The YouTube. Oh, let me get this number. 1,549 subscriptions? That's amazing. We're about to, we're getting to 2,000? That is crazy. I can't believe 2,000 people would want to waste their time watching me do this crap. But nonetheless, if it is entertaining, I will continue to do so. Twitter, 216 followers. That's awesome. If you want me to bug you about when I'm filming these and when they're going live, subscribe or follow me on Twitter. And that, I believe, wraps up the news. So, now we will be going into our amazing tutorial today. Well, not so much a tutorial, but a little bit of a teaching lesson on the ergonomics and setting up of your workspace. So, for that, I would like to perform a little magic trick. Here we go! All right, so as you can see here, we have my lovely desk. As you can see, I'm going to do my best to give you a point of view kind of shot type thing, uh, I will be directing you with my right hand and holding the camera with my left. Wait, what? That's amazing! It's like magic. Ooh, what's happening? Good thing I have that third arm protruding from my chest. Now, without further ado, we will jump into basically how I lay out my workspace. When I am working, I always like to have my Intuos 4 right in front of the keyboard set up perfectly, pretty much centered in front of it. And I, I want to take the time to address the first question that I always get, and that is, how do I work professionally in Photoshop using a mouse? Hmm, how do I get all those nice textures and everything? To that I answer, do not use a mouse. You must invest the proper amount of money into this. This is your tool. This is your lifeline. Never use a mouse. Do not use that. That is not a digital painter's tool. This is right here. And the nice thing is, is that you can go online, you can check them out, you can go on eBay if you want to, and you can check them out, like, you got, what, 59, 95, 102, 47. Watch out for the ones that are a little bit lower, because usually it's just, like, as you can see, you know, here it's tablet only, that's more what you want, tablet only. So I don't know, it's a little bit of a gamble, but just make sure you don't be like, oh, wow, I can get one for, like, 60 bucks, and then it comes and it's just the, the thing without the pen. You need this, too. This is part two of your artist tool. And with that we will move into the proper ergonomics and how to actually hold the pen. So the way that I like to do it is I usually grip it pretty close to the tip right here. And uh, I kind of have a, a weird way of holding it. It's not so much about how you hold it, it's more about where you hold it. But see I kind of hold it like this and then I kind of stabilize it with my pinky. I don't know, it's kind of a weird thing and actually I think it's been causing uh, more problems than than actually fixing things, but it's just kind of a thing of habit that I've had to learn to live with. But, oh yeah, going back to tablets, uh, I'm currently using an Intuos 4, and most of the used ones online you're going to find are Intuos 3s. But if you look right here, uh, you, get, you can get a brand new one, 350 bucks, and I could not agree more that that is an awesome deal, and it's worthy of your your uh, brand new, your, your beginning your journey into digital art. So with that we'll move into, yes, basically how I work while I am in Photoshop. So let's pull up something I was working on actually. Um, now um, you can see here, this is obviously a little drawing thing here. Um, <laughs> this is actually a really cool um, fan creation. It's actually like Kogma is like a, a girl chibi thing. I thought it was really cool. So I was drawing that today. But I'll basically show you 
like as I'm working here, and you can watch up here basically what I'm doing with my hands. So right here you can see as I go to draw things, I usually like to have like I always start with like this light gray, right? Let's get rid of this. Create a new layer, right? So I'm working up here at the keyboard right now, creating a new layer. And now what I'm doing is see, look, I'm, I use these brackets to change the brush size on the fly. That's the left and right angle brackets. If you hold it, it'll make it bigger and smaller. So I usually like to sketch with like a light gray, right? So um, we're using a we're using a soft brush. We don't want a soft brush. We want a hard brush. Scooting it back up. All right. So working with this down here and changing the brush on the fly with this. Man, this is really crazy. This is hard to do. So you can see here, I'm just working. Drawn, drawn, drawn. Okay. So now, if you remember in a couple dailies ago, I was talking about basically how I go from using the brackets to going to alt clicking for the blending tool. And I'll show you kind of how I do that really quickly. So if we pull up uh, Cogina or whatever we want to call it, um, I, I don't even know what name I'd give this character. If you want to, give me a comment down there of what you think this person's name should be. I'm going to call her Cogina, but <laughs> if you have a better one, then you let me know. So I'm going to show you really quick how I kind of overpaint and blend uh, once more. And now you can actually watch my hands do it along with it. So let's say we want to kind of take away how the edges of the skin are kind of blurring into the hair and simultaneously painting over it. So I'm adjusting the brush size on the fly right here, as you can see. Adjusting, adjusting, adjusting. And then when I want a new color to work with, bam, alt click back to adjusting. And then alt click back to adjusting. And when I erase, I do this thing. It's uh, I go up like that, grab it, and then flip it like that. And then that allows me to basically erase. And you kind of get in the habit of doing that trick. I mean, you don't have to make it a trick, but it's kind of fun. It's kind of fun to do every now and then. You notice little things that you do, little habits that you get in form while you're working on, on stiff at work and just at home in general. Alt clicking, alt clicking, you can see over here, alt clicking. And when I hit that alt, again, it brings up my, my eyedropper tool. And that allows me to grab the colors to begin blending. And right now I'm pretty happy with the size of my brush, so just sticking with that. Back to changing on the fly, alt clicking, changing. A lot of my work actually revolves around just doing this. That's that's how I blend. And you can go in here and kind of take away some of these things here. And again, if you look over here, all I'm doing is I've got this layer over top of everything. This is basically what I call the OP layer or the overpaint layer, but I just call it OP because it's funny. Um, and what's going on is I'm just painting over everything that's beneath it, and I'll show you. It's this group. Now what's happening beneath this group is, remember we have our lines all on one layer. Take it away, it looks kind of funky. And then beneath that we have the just the color over top and then the mask. And if you remember when I talked about doing the mask, uh, that's the color that you lay down basically that says, okay, this is, this is gonna be my borders and I don't wanna paint outside of this. And then whatever colors you put on top of that as a layer, then you do you know right click clipping mask or you alt click between them as somebody taught me. That's freaking awesome. I use that all the time now. Basically that clipping mask will not go outside or, or whatever you paint will not go outside of the clipping mask beneath it. So you take all that away and that's pretty much it. So you got the lines, drop the color beneath it like that. Usually group that and then your overpainting goes right over top of that. And then you can just do whatever you want or you can color the lines as well. But that and in fact, I'll show you that right now because that that daily was done a, a while ago, and I'll, I'll show you that again. Once more. So the nice thing about creating your lines on one layer like this 
is it allows you to lock them, lock the pixels with this right here, right here, bottom right, check that out, bam! And then what you can do is, basically it's going to say, okay, wherever your lines are, I'm not going to paint out of those. So let's, uh, let's just grab kind of like a purpley, kind of desaturated thing going on there. Let's grab, actually let's just keep the same brush, make it really big, and then paint over the whole thing. You see how that changed it? completely. Now you got kind of a cool little purple line thing going on. And uh, it just looks like black lines always tend to look a little bit like really comic booky. And as soon as you color those lines, it automatically starts to make it look more kind of, I don't know, finished and polished. It's funny how that can change so much about a drawing. And you can go back in and be like, okay, I want, you know, these lines to be more blue. And then you can go to the skin be like, okay, I want the skin lines to be a little bit more kind of a desaturated reddish. You can go in and do that. See, that's kind of cool. So now it starts to add a little bit more feeling and a little bit more of a, a finished polish to your character. Can also, it can also soften lines and, and make them appear a little bit different too. So it's actually, it's really fun to kind of experiment with. So you can see what that does. And then you can go back to overpainting. Now we're painting is right on, right on top. On top, never stop. Alrighty. So that covers that. Oh, let's talk about the brush sensitivity. Yes. Okay, so what you're going to want to do is when you have your brushes out again, uh, this is another very frequently asked question. I want to make sure to basically go over everything that I get asked most frequently so I can be like, you know, just go check out this episode. It, it answers all those big questions. So the big thing you want to do is not drag it to the side like that. <laughs> Get that out of here. What the heck is this? Okay, I'll have to figure that out later. Okay, but the important thing is you bring up your, br your brush presets by clicking this thing here. On CS4 and 5, I think it's over here somewhere, but it's the same icon. So you'll go here, right? And what I always like to do is I work with hard and soft edge brushes only. And all I really do to get that style or that look is I go to Shape Dynamics, and then I hit Size Jitter, Pen Pressure. If you take it off, it looks like that, right? When you put on Pen Pressure, it does that. Basically, depending on how hard you push, it'll make the, the width of your brush larger or smaller. Other dynamics. The opacity also I set to Pen Pressure. You set it off, it gives you like a, a strong line. It doesn't, it doesn't fade away as you press harder and lighter. And then I always turn on smoothing as well. And lock all of these. And what that does is no matter which brush you choose, it'll continue to use those properties on that brush. And I've just gotten so used to using those that I really like them. I feel like I can pretty much accomplish almost anything that I want to as far as texture wise with those brushes. And then sometimes, the only time I'll ever use like a custom brush is if it's in interest of saving time and it's like a really nice texture brush or whatever, but very rarely do I actually use it. So yeah, I can see a little bit more of what I'm doing. Kind of alt-clicking, alt say I want to add a shine to this little tendril thing over here. Grabbing that over here, and then adjusting the brush size as I throw that in. See, it's all about just kind of choosing where you want your stuff to go. Now I'm alt-clicking, blending. That's all I'm doing. That's all it is. That's all it is. See, it ain't, ain't too hard. It's not like all. It's not all smoke and mirrors. That wasn't so hard, was it? All right. So, with all that out of the way, I want to move into a little bit more of basically how. Speaking of ergonomics, we want to talk about properly stretching. Now, the important thing to do is always. Always, every hour, take time to rest your hand and do stretches. And the best things to do for me are just rolling the wrist like this, uh, sticking your hands out like this, grabbing the thumbs, sticking them down like that, and then tilting your wrists downward like that. And that's going to stretch this tendon really well. And that's actually one of the weakest tendons. Basically, that comes from like gripping the pen all day, and kind of like pressing down constantly. So this is a really good one to do. I usually take maybe about five or ten minutes just to really relax and and uh, let your joints kind of loosen up a little bit before you go back to it. Another one is you stick your hand straight out 
in like that, fingers in, and you grab it with this hand and, and pull it towards you. And that'll loosen up all of the tendons towards uh, back here. Do it again with this hand. Man, that feels good. Then another one I like to do, the last one, is uh, you grab your fingers like this, pull it back like that, and then that gets the tendons on the other side. So that one's really nice. Do it on this hand as well. And if you'll notice over there, we have some amazing pills here. This is called Move Free. Um, this is Move Free Ultra. It has like some special ingredient or something like that. Uh, apparently it just keeps your ligaments and, and tendons working well and kind of just, I don't know. It seems to take away the pressure and, and sort of the, the pain after working all day. That and a good Aleve as of late. But um, yeah, just, just be sure to, uh, the most important thing is to continue stretching. You notice I'm kind of like massaging uh, just the muscle in here. It's because uh, right now the biggest muscle that hurts and is this tendon right here. You can even see it popping out a little bit right there. And then this, this whole muscle right here. So I always just try to kind of relax it, massage it. But the most important thing to do is work smart, not hard. And what I mean by that is make sure to always take a step back and look at your work as a whole and then determine what your next plan of action is and then go from there instead of just constantly like, oh no, I got to do this. Oh, I got to fix this over here. Oh, I got to do that. You know, because then that'll just cause strain and eventually it can lead to injury. So don't do that. As you'll see over here, always have some nice silly putty. This is always fun. It doesn't get stuck to the sketchbook, but um, yeah, this is actually a, a gift given to us uh, at Riot. Um, but I use it as sort of like a little stress ball thing. It's actually really nice. It's kind of fun. And uh, then you got your little sketchbook over there. But yeah, you can see that the layout of my desk is actually fairly not cluttered. I mean, it is fairly messy, but you know, you got the workspace is clean, and that's another important thing to do. Also, for your workspace is lighting. You want to think about having not so not too bright of a workspace, but not too dark. See, I've got this lamp here. And then I've got a few lights behind me. And having a perfect sort of neutral, not too bright of a light source, what that'll do is it'll keep glare off your screens. It'll allow you to focus properly and kind of get into that artist zone. And um, yeah, if it's too dark, you'll start to get kind of sleepy and kind of get out of it. If it's too bright, you're not going to be able to focus. So try to find a good kind of neutral lighting source. And you will be a happy artist. Now, with all of that out of the way, oh, one more thing that I need to talk about. A lot of people have been asking me about what resolution I usually work in. So before we end today's daily, or today's tutorial, I will show you that. So you're gonna wanna go to File, New. Now when I'm working at Riot, when I do my, when I do my splashes, I go 5600 by 3500. Resolution 300. RGB, white, doesn't matter. So you just do that. And these are the dimensions of our splashes for the game. Now when I'm working at home, what I like to do is I just go 8.5 by 11, depending on if you're working hot dog or hamburger style. And then uh, resolution 300. And that's pretty much it. So what this does is it allows me to have kind of a, a perfect balance between a perfect balance between being able to go into detail if you want to, and then it's not so massive that it takes up a lot of space and it makes your computer lag. So I would consider trying those out. Now with that, I will switch it back to my face. Come to us, face! And with that, we will conclude the Kay and Kale Show, episode 29. I hope that this helped you guys out. Let me know in the comments if you enjoyed this style of the show, as well as what do you think the name for the little Kogma girl should be. Again, I think it should be... Oh, I already forgot what it was. So, uh, yeah, I guess that means she's in need of a, a better name that I can actually remember. So, yes, I hope that that helps shed some light on a lot of those frequently asked questions. You know kind of the style and the, how I set up my workspace and how I work professionally. And hopefully 
it will help you out as well. So once again, my name is Keenan Lafferty. Thumbs up if you like it. Thumbs down if you don't. I will see you guys next week, and I am—I did that wrong. But that's okay. I will see you guys later.